that you know the department didn't give us everything that maybe they didn't have the warehouse didn't have all we need and then we usually have it filled out by because we want to be able to track an audit trail that we have here and then and we've got the date uh the, the materials description the plank of wood this is the requester uh, and this is filled by so obviously we want to have the two individuals we want to have someone requesting one one uh filling it out that gives us a system of controls meaning it would be difficult to steal the plank of wood if we have to have two people involved in the requisition process without having some type of collusion in order for that to happen. Date provided and material received date and any remarks that we might have. So this would just be the form, just, just a form for us to get that wood from the warehouse to the work in process so we can start working on it. And remember that all ties out to, to this form as well. So this requisition form is gonna be used here on the on the uh, material side to get the materials out of there and it's also going to be used on the supporting document not that this isn't the actual form we'll see here but it'll also be used in this document which is the job cost so we're moving the materials then over here to the to the uh, job cost system so we're still have our our job job 15 and we're going to allocate this requisition form to it and um, that will that will mean that we're still tracking the wood. It's still there. It hasn't left the company because we haven't sold it yet. But now we're tracking it in the account of work in process. And that account is not supported by us, us tracking the inventory in just planks of wood. It's supported by our job cost sheets. So our job cost sheets are now supporting that piece of inventory. And we're going to have it in this job cost sheet up until it's finished. And then we'll have the job will move to finished goods and it'll still be supported by this job cost sheet. And then we'll finally sell it. And once we sell it, we'll, we'll then move this, all these costs, all these inventory that we bought uh, and, you know, all the material we bought, all the labor we did, all the overhead will then be finally expensed in the form of cost of goods sold at the point of sale. Now we'll take a look at a journal entry related to the materials requisition. So every time we have a materials requisition, we're going to have a journal entry for it for the general ledger accounts. Here we're going to say for all these different jobs. So we're looking at all these jobs and we had all these requisitions for these jobs. We're going to sum up those requisitions. So we're just taking these documents and uh, summing up the materials that were requested. And that's going to come up to a total of uh, 2,230. So the journal entry then we will have is going to be the raw materials going down, the raw materials here, are going down and then it's going to be moved to the work in process account so raw materials is an asset account it has a debit balance we're moving it from the raw materials from the warehouse so that's going to decrease and we're going to move it not too far to another inventory account to work in process so work in process is an inventory account it's an asset account it represents the inventory we're working on it's going to be increased now that's going to be for the direct materials those that we can apply directly out to the uh, guitars if we're making guitars now there also might be some materials that are indirect meaning something like glue or something like that if we're making guitars and if we say that there was requests uh, for for glue or something like that that was indirect that we couldn't assign to a job we didn't no job applied it we just are basically taking stuff from the warehouse and assigning it just in general to be in the where we just gave them glue that can be assigned to anybody who wants to use it in the middle on any guitar <laughs> that they start to work on then we don't know which job to apply it to here and so those may still come out of just the materials we might still have just uh, materials that will be there or we might try to track those types of materials separately so in other words we might have a materials account that includes all materials direct and indirect or we might try to have another account just just has the indirect stuff and and track those separately in this case we're going to say they're all in raw materials and then the indirect materials we're going to say okay that raw materials is going down by 550 and the debit's not going to work in process why because we don't know which job to assign it to it just went into the warehouse and anybody who's making a guitar either any of these jobs that are working on a guitar can use the material so that means that we, we can't assign it yet. We can't put it to work in process because we cannot support it. We can't back it up by particular jobs. So therefore we're gonna put it into the bucket uh, factory overhead. It's still kind of an asset because ultimately it's gonna go into the work in process. It's just that we're gonna have to assign it to a job first. We're just gonna put all the stuff into a bucket 
and then find some way to assign it to a job. So if we look at those journal entries, then we're going to post out the work in process started at zero. It's going to go up by 2200 to 2200. And you can see that work in process then is here on the trial balance. And then uh, the raw materials, here's the general ledger from the raw materials. It was at 1,500, uh, 150,000. It's going down with a credit 2,230 to 147,770. So we just moved it from raw materials to work in process. And then this side, factory overhead, went from zero up by 550. So here's the factory overhead at 550. And then the raw materials are gonna go down again. So raw materials, 147,770, going down by 550 to 147,220. And that then is gonna be the 147,220. So, so yeah, I was 147,770 before. Now it's down to the 147,220 uh, that's represented here on the trial balance after both of these have been completed. Note that none of this, this whole process, is not doing anything to the income statement. We bought the materials, we, we're starting to use the materials, never gonna hit the income statement, never affecting net income until, when's it gonna affect net income? When we're finally done, we move these from work in process to finished goods, and then we move them from finished goods to actually selling them, moving them to cost of goods sold. Now, we will sell it, sales will increase at the same time at that point, but what we're working on is the cost of goods sold that will, will ultimately be the cost. So all the stuff we're doing here is just kind of shuffling around on balance sheet accounts, just shuffling around basically on inventory asset type of accounts to track this process as it goes through and being able to support the process with job cost sheets.